So we're going to begin uh, the second part of this lesson, which is adding color. Uh, we're going to use watercolor. I, it's all your personal preference. If you're a beginner, you can just grab a really inexpensive set. So for this, we're just using just a set of kind of Reeves, Wild, Reeves watercolor. You can get this at Michael's. Um, you can get them in sets of 10, 20. So I would say as a beginner, just pick up a very inexpensive set and uh, learn with those because watercolor can get really pricey. You are also going to need some sort of something to mix on. Uh, these sets come with plastic. I usually just actually use um, a little porcelain plate. I don't know why, but I always feel like my color mix is better on there and it's watercolor, you can wash this off. Uh, you need some water and so mine's here in this little owl and then you need a few watercolor brushes. Any size is fine. It's all personal preference. So um, I usually stick really tiny because the details in here are really, really small. And so we're going to begin with kind of a skin tone and then add hair and clothing from there. With watercolor, you want to dip your paint in the water first and then put it right into the color and just kind of mix it a little bit like this off to the side. The nice part about watercolor is if you don't like that shade or you want to change your mind, you dip it in the water and swish it around and your paintbrush is clean. So it's a nice and easy way to do that. Um, when picking the tones for uh, the flesh color, you can actually mix a whole bunch of different colors and you can put this paintbrush right back into the other color and just kind of mush it around until you get the color you want. You can't mess it up. And if you don't like it, put your paintbrush back in the water and rinse it off again. It's very, very easy if you're just not afraid to make a mess. I'll start with kind of a peachy tint. We added a little bit of this orange to it uh, and we'll start there. You want to move your brush around very quickly and it dries quickly, but watercolor has a mind of its own. So you can't control it all that well and you have to be okay with that. When you want to keep moving it around just add a little bit more water and you can fully control where you put it. Just make sure you're moving your brush very quickly and if you feel like you've made a mistake dip it in water and move it around some more. The water almost acts as an eraser to an extent on the watercolor because if you need it thinner you just add water and if you want more color you just add more paint. Like I said it is going to run so you don't want to add too much. I start with the face and start with a little bit of color and then I add color exactly to where you would kind of add your makeup. Put it right on your cheek, under the cheekbone, put it where um, a shadow would hit so just keep touching it with more color and you can add where shadows hit on your own face. When I was in art school for this, we actually worked with mirrors in front of us to kind of learn where those shadows are, but I put them above the eyes right here next to the nose and I add always more color to the cheekbones. And it's gonna look like a lot right now, but in the end, you'll hardly see those tones. So just keep dipping it in the water, adding a little bit more of the flesh tone. And I usually try to not fully color it and then let the water kind of do its job, which is fill in the rest. Like I said, if you are a control freak, watercolor, not for you. So it just kind of runs on its own. So I like to put it where the shadows would hit and then mix the water in between and let it do its own thing. So now we have the top area done. We're going to move right to her arms and do the same thing. So one more time, a little bit of the flesh color, whatever you decide on, put it where you want, you know, its darkest points to be, move the brush around really quickly, dip it in water and let the water kind of do the rest of the work for you. It gives it a nice, um, not too overthought look and it kind of looks undone which is what I like about it. I like when fashion illustrations look really really sketchy 
and we'll do the same thing for the other arm. Put the color right in where you want the darks. Move your paintbrush really quickly. Before it dries too much, add in the water and it will just kind of fill the rest in. I'm gonna do the same for her hand and don't overthink it. Just lay it in and work, work quickly and it usually works out. Um, for legs, I usually switch to a little bit of a thicker brush. It's just because the area that we're coloring in is a little bit thicker. You can do it with a smaller brush. You're just gonna see more of those brush strokes and working quickly with watercolor is the way that I prefer to work. So, dip it in water, back to the flesh tone, and you start where all the shadows would hit. So, if this is where her skirt opens, there would be a shadow here. Bring it right along the inside of the leg. You can even go right over those circles where the knees are and just kind of put it in where, right against the lines that you originally drew. Leave some white and then if you want, you can let the water kind of fill, fill in the rest. I sometimes go back, I'll show you in a minute, and add a little bit more dark, but if you do it right now, it's too wet, so it's just gonna run all through her legs. So I like, I like it to be a little bit more controlled and the drier it is, the more controlled it is. I'll do the same thing down here for her foot. And on her other leg. So darker around the knees where the shadows would hit and around the outsides of the leg. And then very quickly use the water and just let it fill it in. And then you have these nice little highlighted parts. It looks like it really gives the legs some, some nice accents. But the key to this is working quickly and not overthinking it. So for beginners, this is gonna be really, really hard. This will come more naturally you know, on your fourth drawing or fourth painting. So right now, this is all drawing, uh, all drying. So what you can do is, if at any point you wanna add more darks in, you definitely want to make sure that you're starting from the top again because look this is already dry so you can't really mess that up yet i will add just a few more darks into the arms because while it might look dark right now after we add clothing this will look like nothing so don't be afraid to get a little bit darker there and i'm actually going to add a little bit more color to the leg because i like it when you can kind of see the lines and this is just personal preference if you don't want to do this don't do it uh, you're the artist so you definitely want it to feel like you all of my work is stylized which means um, they all kind of have the same little additions to it and these unfinished lines are how I like my artwork to look but you have full control uh, of what you want your work to look like well, at this point, we're just wrapping up skin tone, and I feel pretty good about where it's at right now. Um, I usually do skin and hair first. You can do this totally out of order. I'm just sharing my way of doing it. Um, and I usually do that because clothing-wise, um, I like to change shades if I need to based on what our character is looking like.